Let's talk about the importance of the mind-body connection for your overall health and wellness, as well as how to develop that connection or even to strengthen that connection. Let's dive in. We hear a lot these days about mind-body medicine and the mind-body connection, but why should you actually care? Why is it really important? It is important to think about this connection because clinically, a lot of the symptoms that I see walk through my door in my physical practice, as well as with my online coaching practice, a lot of it has to do with either psychological stress, emotions, or just some sort of underlying psychological issue. Not saying that you're crazy or that anybody is crazy. It just really means that there is a mind component, a spirit component that we often don't think about when it comes to our overall health and wellness. And we often don't think that those things can cause physical symptoms. And when we actually take time to think about it, it actually makes sense from a physiological standpoint, right? When we are stressed out, when we're feeling overwhelmed, or when we have dealt with some sort of emotional trauma, or even just a huge life change. There's often a lot of stress that comes with that. And what we don't realize is that that stress can actually cause things like oxidative damage. And then when this goes unchecked and goes on for a longer period of time, what often results is an increase in inflammation. So when a person maybe is under a lot of stress, be it, you know, psychological, be it emotional, or maybe that person has just been repressing those emotions for a long time, we often see inflammatory markers, things such as CRP or even ESR, we often see them elevated. And if you start to back up and take a broader view on the the physical body and the fact that we are literally made up of energy. If you start to think about our emotions and what that does to our physical body, when we have these emotions tied up or when we don't release them properly or when we are chronically thinking these thoughts over and over again and we're really not paying attention to how we're thinking and how we're feeling, a lot of times that stuff gets stuck in the body. We know for a fact that when we think these thoughts over and over again, or when we have a very traumatic experiences or very emotional experiences, we know that there's a pattern that happens into the, in the brain where these things get imprinted and can then start to make the fear center or the limbic brain uh, more, let's say more active. And we start to increase the neuronal connections in the brain for that fear center. So what do we get? We get more fear, more trauma, more emotion, more stuck and usually more pain, more anxiety, more GI issues. So when we think about it from this way, from this broader, more connected sort of point of view, it actually makes sense that this mind-body connection is something that we really need to bring to the forefront of our health and wellness. So one question you might ask is, how does this stuff kind of present? Like, what might that look like? In my clinical experience, it can look like pain. It can look like, you know, new onset pain. The most popular example is probably like the chronic low back pain that really doesn't have a particular structural etiology. I often see it present as muscle aches, muscle tightness, muscle stiffness, back pain, headaches. I also see the other side of increasing anxiety, new onset anxiety, depression, other types of neuropathic pain patterns. So pain that your nervous system kind of let can't let go, even then, even though there's no structural or actual physical reason for you to be in pain. I often see this with things like tendinitis and other sorts of uh, musculoskeletal uh, conditions. Another way in which this presents that we don't often talk about is actually gut issues. We know we have this whole category called IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, not to be confused with IBD which is irritable bowel disease. But with IBS, we often say, we don't even know why it happens. It's idiopathic. And a lot of times it can be made worse with things like stress. So we know in a way, especially in modern medicine, we know in a way that, you know, our emotions or stress can often have an impact on certain types of conditions. We just haven't really gotten to a point where we're really talking about how to deal with it and how to better manage that other than just taking a pill. So that then begs the question of how do we deal with this? And if medication isn't always the answer and newsflash, it's usually not, what do we need to be doing? Well, there's a few things that I have seen to be very helpful and I wanted to share those with you. So one of my go-tos is always going to be yoga. And I don't mean things like power yoga or where music is blasting super loud and where your intent is just to sweat. I mean kind of traditional hatha yoga or vinyasa based practice, but it also needs to be linked with the breath. So this is where 
in kind of a, with my background and my training through yoga, it was based on Ashtanga, but also a vinyasa based practice where each movement is linked either with an inhale or an exhale. And the most important thing is that you're actually feeling the breath into the body. You're linking your movements to the breath and you're using your breath as a measure of how far you need to go into the pose, you know, how comfortable you are in the pose, but also seeing where you feel uncomfortable and where the breath gets stuck. This type of practice really has a powerful connection between the mind and the body. You're literally delving deeper into your body. You're kind of getting rid of all the external thoughts. You're focusing really just on connecting the breath and the body. And you'll be surprised at the awareness that comes up when you start to do this and how that awareness can then carry on throughout your day as well. And then, of course, this is with a more consistent type practice, but it's often overlooked when we say something like yoga, people just think, oh, I'm just going to hold this pose. I probably won't sweat and blah, yada, yada, yada. But no, I mean a, a very kind of traditional type of practice where the emphasis really is on the breath and feeling that breath into the body. Again, this makes a very powerful mind-body connection. Another method is, of course, meditation. You know, I talk a lot about meditation on this channel, but in this particular way in which we're trying to increase that or strengthen that mind-body connection, I'm thinking about meditation in a way where you're actually sitting with the sitting with yourself and really acknowledging the emotions that come up. Most of the time we think about, okay, a thought comes up. I got to erase the thought. I got to let it go. But in this type of meditation, we're thinking more about sitting and then feeling the, whatever emotion arises and feeling, where do you feel it? Or thinking about where do you feel it in your body? And then you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to make it go away. You don't have to try to change it, but you just have to acknowledge where you're feeling that. A lot of times, you know, our emotions are repressed or we don't let things move through. Emotionally speaking, they get kind of stuck in our bodies sometimes. A lot of people will feel it in their chest or maybe in their solar plexus and just feel like a tightness. Maybe they'll feel anger. Whatever the emotion may be, the practice really just has to do with sitting with that and just observing it. And the beauty in that is that a lot of times when we observe it, those emotions then come to the surface and then we're able to really deal with them or let them kind of flow through. Whereas maybe when they first came up, you know, maybe we were in a survival type mode and we couldn't deal with them. We couldn't process them then right there, but they're always going to be there if you don't deal with them at some point. And that type of kind of meditation, it can be a great practice and really learning how to deal with those those emotions that may come up that may be causing some of the symptoms. In that same sort of thought process, things like journaling can be helpful and really just journaling, not to the point where you need to go reread it again, but just letting it be a free flow of whatever you're feeling at the time. Just putting pen to paper can be a great way for your brain to kind of dump some of this out. And also, again, it may bring up those emotions that you can then sit with and just process and just let them be. Another method that I feel like we don't talk about enough is actually like a progressive muscle relaxation technique. So this can be where you're lying down or you could do it seated in a chair or even sitting on the floor, but it's where you actually intentionally clench areas. Kind of my favorite practice is to kind of start from head to toe. So then, you, so you would like close your eyes and squeeze your eyes as tight as you can and then relax them and then squeeze your jaw as tight as you can and then relax it and feel what it feels like to actually feel the tension and then release it. And oftentimes as you're going through different areas in your body, so you would kind of scan yourself from head to toe. And as you're going through this different, different areas in the body, a lot of times you don't realize how much tension you're carrying there. And again, with that tension, sometimes you may realize that there may be an emotion underneath it as well. So progressive muscle relaxation, I'll leave some links uh, down in the description box to uh, some resources if you're unfamiliar with this type of practice. Another aspect or component you might want to look into when thinking about strengthening that mind and body connection actually has to do with looking at your spiritual practice. Um, again, as I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of times when, you know, things are falling apart or we're really stressed out or things seem to be shaken up in our world, a lot of times it's kind of our higher self calling to us to say like, hey, you're off track here. Like, hey, you got to change. You got to switch it up. 
So looking into ways to really allow yourself to expand and to meet your higher self or to be more connected with your higher self, I think is a better way to say that. Realizing that this may be part of why things might be falling apart or why things may be more symptomatic. So really having some practices to understand that can also be helpful. And check out this video if you want to dive a little bit more into that. And one final thing. So we talked a lot about, you know, things you can do for yourself at home, but sometimes you may need a little bit more help. And so that's where, you know, seeking out different practitioners might be helpful. Things like massage and touch can often be very therapeutic to release stored emotions, to make that mind body connection, really tapping into some areas where maybe you don't have a lot of connection there. Having that hands-on with something like massage may be helpful. Even stretching, having someone else help you stretch and stretch for you. There's a lot of different techniques out there where people, you know, different practitioners actually help you stretch and help you release these areas of the body. One of my favorites, you know, near and dear to my heart because I am an acupuncturist is acupuncture. Acupuncture is just so, can be so profound and have profound effects on the nervous system. I've had so many people get on the table and, you know, when I put certain needles in or press certain points, they just burst into tears and the emotion just comes out. It's another way, another form of release as well. So if you are looking to strengthen that mind-body connection, these are just a few techniques that may be helpful that I found helpful with both patients and clients. Again, my goal is always to empower you to take control of your health and wellness, to bring awareness to some of the issues that I see in modern medicine that we're just not getting it right. We're, we're, we're getting closer, I, I think, but a lot of times we're just not acknowledging these things and we're just not bringing the whole picture together. So my goal with this type of video is really always to empower you to take control of your health and wellness. If you feel like you need some help or some guidance, you can always click on the link down in the description box to learn how to work with me. You can learn how to work with me inside of my coaching program or even with a virtual console if you feel like you just need a little bit of guidance and to get back on track. Anyway, Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you learned something. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.